MLB, you know, MLB AM more specifically, people are like, what, what's that? What does this have to do with technology? Baseball, generally not known for high tech, uh, perhaps outside of us. And so I want to talk a little bit just for a second about technology and baseball. And so people, you know, there's a lot of things we take for granted now that were actually huge technological innovations. And so starting in 1869, when baseball had the first professional sports team, uh, the Cincinnati Red Stockings, and so we look at it now and it looks old timey, but at the time, like the notion of a professional sports league was really quite innovative. And then we fast forward and we take a look at the Thomas Edison Company shooting what we believe to be the first actual footage of baseball being played uh, before 1900 in 1898. Pretty interesting stuff. And uh, you know, when you think about the names involved with it especially, pretty cool. In 1909, uh, Shree Park, where the Philadelphia Athletics played, was the first construction to use steel and concrete. Uh, for a stadium. And so when you think about something like that, we take it for granted now, we're standing in a steel and concrete building, but the notion of building a public building with steel and concrete predominantly was revolutionary in 1909. The, uh, my favorite word, the playograph, uh, was introduced for the 1911 World Series. And so you understood what this was, was a mechanical scoreboard where they would listen to telegraph uh, transmissions of the game, recounting the game, and then they would display it for groups of people that would watch this, like we would go out to Central Park and watch a movie right now. And this was revolutionary because you could follow the baseball game visually hundreds of miles away. In 1921, the first live game aired on radio. Uh, it was actually uh, uh, Harold Arkin and KDKA. And so that was also one of these things where baseball and media started to be there. You know, we have the newspaper way back in the first slide that I showed you, and now getting into radio, being revolutionary on that side of it. Crosley Field in 1935 becomes the first night game. Now, to put this in context, the first power plant in Germany, in Europe, was built in 1933. So the vast majority of the world is still reading by lamplight, and the first baseball games actually played under real lights, electric lights, newfangled. 1923, Yankee Stadium becomes the first three-tiered structure for a stadium. And it doesn't seem like a big innovation, but at the time, people thought it was going to collapse. They were like, oh, you know, you go to the game, three tiers, it'll never stand. Uh, and obviously, we know that that stadium lasted quite a long time. Uh, 1933, Fenway becomes the first to have ball and strike scoreboard lights. So electric newfangled technology to let you know what the count was. In 1939, the first baseball game is aired on television. So again, the intertwining of baseball and media and technical innovation to put this game on. Uh, very, very cool. And for those of you who don't recognize the logos, which uh, I've, I've peppered into the presentation, that's like the Brooklyn Dodgers uh, versus Cincinnati. Going on, Yankee Stadium in 1950 becomes the first electric scoreboard. So actually controlled with switches and knobs and all sorts of fun stuff like that, but the first electric scoreboard. 1962, we do the first transatlantic broadcast. And so getting a live sporting event from the United States to Europe, this is uh, the Philadelphia Phillies, as you now probably recognize the logo on the Cubs, which the logo didn't change that much for about 30 years. And then 1965, we start getting into some more construction. The first dome stadium in Houston, the Astrodome. Uh, impressive structure, lasted quite a long time. And then moving on, we wind up getting into uh, Dodger Stadium in 1980, where you have the first video scoreboard. So again, an intersection of media and baseball, where Dodger Stadium, people, this was revolutionary, this notion that you could watch it. It was pretty dim, you know, by today's standards, but kids seemed happy in the picture. 1989, we have the first fully retractable uh, roof at the Sky Dome, uh, now Rogers Center. And so again, this notion of like trying to, to innovate on baseball, trying to in innovate architecturally, media-wise, things like that. And in 1992, you start to get this new renaissance that we've been in uh, for the last you know, couple of decades, which is the kind of uh, retro, the old-timey feel, but very, very modern ballparks. And that was really cemented by Camden Yards, uh, Oriole Park at Camden Yards. And so it's an impressive structure, and uh, it got the vibe of, like, we don't need to build these, like, soulless sort of coliseum-type places. We can actually really try to get back into making it feel like an old-time ballpark. So that fusion of retro and, and modern, I think, is, is pretty cool stuff. And then in 2000, from a personal standpoint, one of the most innovative things was the formation of Major League Baseball Advanced Media. And so our part of baseball was essentially spun out from baseball. And all we were given were the digital rights. And we were sort of said, go do it. Nobody really knew what those rights were worth or, or how we were going to parlay them. But let's go ahead and, and see what you guys can make of it. 
what that yielded was you know, 30 team websites plus MLB.com, which wound up, you know, when we were founded, MLB.com was not actually owned by the league. It was a law firm. And so we had to buy the domain name for our, for MLB, as hard as it's to believe in 2000. Uh, but we're, you know, a wholly owned subsidiary. We operate all the web and the mobile stuff. You know, taking a look, we're, we believe to be one of the largest uh, New York born uh, tech, born and bred tech startups. Uh, about two thirds of our employees work in technology at this point in time. We also do a bunch of third party stuff, which I'll touch on for a second. Um, and you know, with that, we're going to do about 400,000 live streaming hours just this year. Um, so some pretty pretty cool stuff going on. Little tour of our transmission operations center. Lots of cool TVs, lots of cool gadgets. But it, it just sort of shows the scale of what we're doing. We also have a San Francisco one coming online right now. A uh, little picture of some of the folks that we do things for. So you recognize some of these logos. These are our third party clients that we provide tech services to. And you'd ask yourself, well, why? is baseball doing third party work. And I think it comes down to this uh, slide. In 2002, we were the first to stream live event, live sporting event on the internet. And so when you look at this, we had about 30,000 viewers and that is, uh, that's actually much bigger than actual size. Um, and so we went from that in 2002 to celebrating our 12th year in over the top technology where we're the number one sports streaming service again this year with 400 plus devices, full HD, all that sort of thing. And so a lot of other brands, a lot of other companies saw what we had done in those technologies and innovation and said, can we do that for them as well? And so that's where we've been providing a lot of third party business. Uh, we also bet heavy and early on mobility. And so if you look at some of the stuff, I won't, I won't uh, bore you with some of the things you can read just as fast as I could speak or faster probably. Uh, but you know, talk about being first in a lot of these things, first to stream live video, first applications on these platforms. You know, showing up in keynotes where it's like so and so, so and so in baseball, but we, we've managed to weasel our way in there and, and innovate. Uh, most recently with the watch, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, that's also sprouted a bunch of apps, and so you see some of the brands coming forward from the uh, previous slide into things that we've built ourselves in house for a lot of these clients. You say, well, what's the future? Look how far Hayward had to go. Completely laid out right off the top of the turf. So I'm just going to pause that right there for a second uh, before we move on. But this is utilizing player tracking technology. So uh, a combination of radar and um, machine vision systems that are actually figuring out where every player is on the field at any given time and where the ball is. Um, and that, a little taste of that is the type of stats that we can come up with, which are pretty cool. Um, one of the things that I point out is uh, Jason Hayward in that clip. If you look at his reaction time, he reacts in uh, 0.2 seconds. So he reacted 10 times faster than the speed of sound from the hit got to him. That's how fast he was. And when he did it, he ran 97% accurate to that ball. So he doesn't make that catch if all those things don't align. Really cool stuff, the ability to quantify things we've never seen before. Uh, alas, that is not our challenge. <laughs> so now the question is, okay, Joe, you have a cool job. Sounds fun. What does this mean for me? Like, what am I going to do? Why are you asking me stuff? Uh, stop showing off and showing us a whole bunch of baseball stuff. So to that, what is the challenge? The challenge is we got a lot of content. You know, as I walked through that timeline and I showed you sort of where media intersected, how early it intersected in baseball, a lot of this content is sitting in boxes and shelves waiting to be discovered. You know, hopefully we've got a lot of it and the things that we know about we've gotten, but there's undoubtedly huge nuggets that are there. But from an economic standpoint, it doesn't make sense to do it with human beings. We need to rely on at least mostly automated, if not fully automated, digitization of this stuff as well as annotation of it. And so, as I said, these things are rotting. You know, like the time is not on our side with the physical media. Some of this stuff is on film that we're actually having transferred now. And, you know, we could do the preservation side of it, but it's sort of like putting it in a box. If you don't really know what's in the box, it doesn't do you a lot of good. So we want to monetize it. We want to put it out there. We want to show people cool stuff with baseball. And the how is taking advantage of some of the stuff that's in there, optical character recognition, voice recognition, uh, scene boundary detection, all sorts of stuff. Whatever you can come up with, that's what we want to see. 